Hi guys, today we're going to explore how your gut talks to your brain and why this matters for your mood and mental health. And we'll also cover three simple things you can do to improve the conversation. Stay tuned. Okay, so you may or may not have heard of the gut-brain axis. If you haven't, you're in the right place. If you have, then you might learn something too, hopefully. So your body has a direct communication line between your gut, so your gastrointestinal system, and your brain and your central nervous system. It's called the gut-brain axis, and it links your nervous system, your digestive system, and your immune system in one super network. Your gut has its own nervous system as well. It's sometimes called the second brain, or the enteric nervous system. So you have over 100 million neurons in your gut. So most of us probably think about neurons as being in the brain. But you actually have 100 million neurons in your gut. And this network talks constantly with your brain. It sends updates about what's going on inside your digestive system. The messages go both ways as well. So your brain affects your gut's function. Think butterflies in your stomach when you're anxious, for instance. And your gut affects how your brain works, including mood, focus and sleep. Have you ever felt stressed and your gut feels really unsettled? This is a manifestation of the gut-brain axis. So when you're stressed, your brain helps activate the sympathetic nervous system, part of your fight, flight or freeze response, which sends signals down the gut-brain axis, our two-way communication superhighway. This causes a cascade of changes in your gut. So we think it reduces blood flow to digestion as energy is diverted elsewhere, muscle contractions or spasms in the digestive tract, changes in gut motility and this can lead to symptoms like nausea or bloating or that butterflies feeling shifts in microbial activity as well which can further impact digestion and mood and potentially increased gut permeability also known as leaky gut in chronic stress which can promote inflammation now much of the communication between your gut and your brain happens through the vagus nerve this is a long nerve, it's called a cranial nerve. It acts like a telephone line between your gut and your brain. But hormones, immune signals, and even gut microbes like bacteria, these are all part of the conversation too. So you may have heard me say this before, but inside your gut live trillions of bacteria and other microbes. Think fungi, and there's organisms called archaea as well, and also viruses. So you have this huge community of microorganisms inside you and on you, on your skin, in your airways, etc. Everyone watching this video has around 380 trillion viruses inside them at any given moment. But don't worry, we think that many of them are playing key roles in keeping bacteria in check. So these are also known as phage viruses and they kind of hunt down bacteria. So the same kind of predator-prey dynamics that occur in the visible world also occur inside your body on a microscopic level. So together, all of these microbes, the bacteria, the fungi, the viruses, etc., they make up your gut microbiome. And these microbes aren't just along for the ride. They actually help regulate your immune system, help you digest food, and they make important signaling molecules in your body as well. This allows your body's cells to communicate with each other. Now, some gut bacteria make compounds that can influence your brain, like short-chain fatty acids. And now these play a really important role in reducing or controlling inflammation and may influence how the brain works. So the evidence is growing, suggesting that microbes produce these chemicals and they can actually influence the brain. Other microbes produce compounds that can actually influence the chemicals that your body produces. GABA, for instance, it's a calming chemical in the brain. So some microbes help your body regulate GABA activity, even if GABA itself doesn't easily cross into the brain. So the compounds that microbes make, they don't always cross your blood-brain barrier. So the blood-brain barrier is this protective barrier around your brain. In a sense, it's actually part of the immune system, protecting your brain from harm. So gut microbes may also influence the production of what's called BDNF, or brain-derived neurotrophic factor. This is a protein that helps your brain grow, adapt, and stay resilient. And changes in your microbiome, they've been linked to anxiety, depression, and even memory problems. Stress, antibiotics, poor diet, and pollution, or too little sleep, these can all throw the system out of balance. 
but the good news is you can support your gut brain axis in simple natural ways. So let's talk about three simple ways to support your gut brain connection. Number one, feed your microbes. You know the saying, you are what you eat? Actually, a more accurate term would be, you are what your microbes eat, as John Cryan and others would say. So you need to feed your microbes. Eat more fibre-rich foods like vegetables and legumes and whole grains and some fermented foods as well. These nourish your good bacteria and help them produce beneficial compounds. You might have heard of the rainbow diet, so this is basically having a diet rich in all sorts of different colourful fruits and vegetables, etc. And you might have heard of the 30 plants per week. Now this can sound quite daunting, 30 plants, but actually it can include things like spices and different teas as well. So I have a few different kinds of teas every day. So I have ginger tea and green tea, licorice tea, all sorts of different teas. And each one of these is a plant. So you can think that 30 plants can be achieved fairly easily when you consider this. Number two, move your body. This might sound strange, but exercise boosts both brain health and gut health. Even a regular brisk walk could potentially improve the communication between your gut and your brain. Moving also increases gut motility. This makes your gut a healthier environment. Number three, spending time outdoors in the natural world can reduce stress and anxiety. It can boost your immune system and potentially microbial diversity on your skin as well. There's also some suggestions that spending time in biodiverse environments where there's lots of different animals and plants, this can improve your gut microbiome through contact with the natural environment, although more research is needed. Spending time in nature is a multi-sensory experience, so you're engaging all of your senses, smell, sight, hearing, etc. Now these multi-sensory experiences, they can influence your central nervous system and your immune system in various ways. Now we need to do more research on this, but I think this multi-sensory experience is actually shaping your gut microbiome, potentially in more robust ways than simple colonization by microbes from the environment. Either way, spending time in nature has been shown to be really good for reducing stress and anxiety, which can be beneficial for both your gut and your brain. Bonus tip. Reduce ultra-processed foods, so things like crisps and biscuits and sweets or candy, sugary soft drinks, and basically anything with loads of those E numbers in the ingredients list. These can all harm your gut bacteria. So yes, your gut really does talk to your brain and vice versa, and you can support the conversation between them with simple daily habits. If you found this helpful, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and you can sign up to my free newsletter over at www.jakemrobinson.com. And don't forget, stay wild inside and out.